Hi, my name is Glenn Acaster. I am a, a lead network services architect here at Node4. Uh, I spend most of my time developing products, working with pre-sales, uh, working with customers to design solutions that, that meet their business needs and, and hopefully uh, alleviate some of the challenges that they see uh, in their IT infrastructure. One of the big areas that I'm working in right now is, is SD-WAN, um, also things like network access control where you know, we're seeing a real um, you know, demand from businesses for, for these cutting edge technologies that are really transforming their, their networking and, and other infrastructure. SD-WAN is still a hot topic for, for most businesses and we've seen a lot of UK businesses adopting SD-WAN. Originally, it was you know it was massive in in North America, and uh, you know it's, it's made its way over here as well. Not always for the same reasons. Often you'll see cost mentioned as a, as one of the reasons why SD WAN is adopted. But here in the UK, it's, I think it's more about the the flexibility and the automation that that it gives you, and the ability to control your network and integrate your network with other services from from one point from one management platform. Um, we've, we have you know, seen a lot of businesses out there and their IT leaders now understanding SD-WAN and the benefits that it can bring. They understand how it compares to, to alternative solutions like MPLS. Um, some businesses out there are still considering whether SD-WAN is right for them. We've seen a lot of businesses go on a journey where they've either accidentally or intentionally adopted cloud, they've spun up services in the cloud, they've adopted software as a service applications and you know in many cases that's led to them rethinking their network and security infrastructure and considering whether it's suitable going forward with these new cloud and SaaS technologies. In a lot of cases this leads on to looking at SD-WAN and um, you know we've seen a lot of consolidation and automation through WAN services being overhauled uh, by using SD-WAN. We've seen some businesses trying to uh, you know, do SD-WAN themselves and to, to deploy the technology themselves. And you know, I would make no mistake that it is uh, quite a complex technology to actually deploy. There is a lot of templating and standardization that needs to be done there are uh, a lot of you know things in your existing network that you need to need to audit and you need to uh, you need to analyze and you need to look at ways that you can overhaul your network to deploy everything in a, in a very standardized manner we also have to develop the configuration in those templates and uh, and make sure that those are accurate for deploying on on your network and it's probably with a technology that you know you may not have used before and that that brings its own challenges in terms of having to upskill your people and uh, you know be able to get the most out of that technology and you know it, it really can be a very complex thing to uh, to go out there and deploy this is why we're seeing a big emergence of network and security service providers out there that are starting to you know bring managed SD-WAN solutions to the marketplace and you know a lot of those are from providers that have been slow to react um, you know they've not been able to get products developed and tested and to market quick enough to actually you know be there when when this really started to take off and you know also they they probably didn't see the benefits of it and thought that MPLS would would win and you know, we have looked at MPLS and SD-WAN and really tried to find uh, a good middle ground that will benefit, you know, enterprise all the way through to small business customers. For those businesses that are looking at uh, solutions like SD Branch, where they can bring uh, wired and wireless under the same platform as their, their SD-WAN, they should also take the opportunity to look at things like network access control and they should look at how they can deploy things like zero trust network access so that they can verify every device that comes onto the network and make sure that, that meets your 
you know, your security policies, your corporate IT policy, make sure it's a sanctioned device and, uh, and only when you have made those validations you allow it onto the network. And once it's on the network, you, you, uh, you give it the minimum required access that that device needs based on either its function or the function of the user that, uh, that will be using it. And you should also con constantly check that that device is still acting as you expect and it hasn't changed in any way and you should be monitoring that in a real time and ongoing basis. The reason for that is because you know devices can be compromised at any time. It could be that someone downloads some malware while operating that device accidentally. It could be that that user becomes disgruntled and, and suddenly has uh, you know a reason to want to extract data from, from your business and you know this is becoming critical for, for a lot of different sectors particularly uh, you know banking financial services and insurance also you know retail where people uh, members of the public are, are you know required for a business to succeed to be on their premises and if if that wired and wireless networking was accessible to anyone and they had unrestricted access once they had connected then you would be putting your business at significant risk so I would say while you know while you are looking at standardizing your network while you're looking at bringing in that that wireless and wired security and networking you should be uh, should be looking at how you can overlay that with with a zero trust network access policy as well.